We'll take care of it. Have a seat. Welcome to Christ Lutheran Church. Welcome to everybody today. We got a young family visiting with us, moved to the neighborhood. I'm not going to try and do all the names. You want to try and tell me all the names again? Megan, Zach, Eva, and Isaac. Megan, Zach, Eva, Ivan, there you go. Welcome, everybody tell them welcome. There you go. Glad to have you with us today. Thanks for checking us out. So, uh, Today, a couple of quick announcements for you. Thank you for your patience. We had a huge amount of people outside. Uh, again, we had almost 60 people for Worship Without Walls, which is you know, that you start adding 10, 15 people, then the cars that go with them might get delayed. So thank you for your patience out there. That's why we keep everything pegged in the narthex. Somebody was actually funny. Leaving the 10 o'clock, they said, can you please ask them to be quiet in the narthex? I'm like, no. <laughs> be glad you're here, and we can't close the doors because then it's touching. Oh, I'm like, and if you sit right where Bob and Joyce is? move over here <laughs> so good problem to have uh, a couple of uh again announcements for you today uh, for those of you who remember uh, our property superintendent back when that was the title of that position uh, which is now bob satara that does facility manager uh, gary barris uh, had left the church i will get you a bulletin sit down please you've already touched enough things today i said i'll take care of it Everybody heard me say that. Twice. Uh-huh. For those of you who are visiting, I'm having trouble with contact tracing, and she's one of my worst. Uh-huh. Anyway, Gary Barris unfortunately died uh, Saturday about 4 a.m. at home. He had been sick for a long time. It's one of the reasons why uh, we were not able to keep him on as our property superintendent. Uh, he, uh, Michelle, called me. We had last rites with him at the hospital. On Wednesday, she got him home to their house there uh, in Lady Lake on Thursday, and he died 4 a.m. or so, what, 422 on Saturday morning. Uh, we most likely will be having a celebration of his life here at a later date to be determined. Uh, the information to send cards will be in your bulletin next week. Uh, it was too late to get that in this week. If you'd like to call Michelle and express your condolences, please see me and I'll, or call, and we'll get you her phone number. These flowers here are in honor and memory of the celebration of life we had for Tony Pryor uh, this Friday. He was a longtime member of the congregation. He was homebound, and we celebrated his life here at 1 o'clock on Friday. You must like homemade soup, two Sundays of Advent. You've already eaten $500 plus worth of soup. There are at least nine varieties or so out there. Kay has a table. They're all homemade for those of you visiting if you like soup and so. Yeah, the split pea, I will not be buying. So uh, thank you for doing that. Uh, this is the last uh, Sunday to bring in the gifts for the angel tree. You can see some of the gifts here. Of course, there are gifts at Beef O'Brady's where we also have a tree. We'll dedicate those today. If by chance you still have an angel and you haven't brought in the angels, please wait after service. Barb is one of the team members. You can tell her. Because they're going to get a list ready and then go shopping for all the kids in need. And that begins today. Of course, you've got Elizabeth and Al and Carol here, right here. You want to raise your hands? And Vicki, yes, and John. Make sure you tell somebody if you've got that angel at home so they don't then go shopping, okay? But you also need to get it here as quickly as you can. So part of the reason to get it done now is Lake Weir Middle School will be getting out of school. And so we've got to get the gifts there. You'll see that in the insert in the bulletin to dedicate them, we now have six agencies that we're caring for. At least one of them is new. Uh, I want to just briefly tell you about them a little bit. The new one is the Ocala Domestic Violence Center. We're helping those kids there. We've helped Shepherd's Lighthouse in Bellevue for years. If you're not familiar with what they do, for women who find themselves unemployed, down and out with children, they bring them in and they teach them life skills. They make sure their kids stay in school. They have an incredible success rate of getting people well and putting them back into uh, the population. More than 80% of the women and those kids stay in school and stay in their jobs when they graduate out of Shepherd's Lighthouse. If you study, that's incredibly high. So we're helping them. Hands of Mercy Everywhere is also up there. Uh, we're helping the kids there. Uh, that is 
which I found out something new today, uh, as we knew it, it was for unwed moms, usually very young, some, some as young as 14. They bring them in, teach them how to be moms, walk through the birthing process with them and all that. And they also do an incredible job of having those people stay in school and not be unemployed, etc. I found out today they are now doing a ministry for men and boys. Okay? So we'll find out more about that um, as we expand those ministries. They may have another, I think they have a second house maybe possibly now. So that's hands of mercy everywhere in Bellevue. Our Girl Scout troop, um, some of the kids are in need Very in this congregation. We're helping them. There's one or two families. Their grandkids need help. And uh, I think I got them all. Was that all six? I believe so. So thank you for that. Beautiful, all the gifts, isn't it? Shh, the, the wall's going to look pretty barren next week. So, But Bob will still be up here. You can stare at him. And the tree. And the tree. It's cold weather season, if we can call that in Florida cold weather. Um, the coats and blankets, Al and Carol are right here. They've been delivering those for uh, right here. They're, not, they're looking around. Raise your hand. You got, you're not normally, raise your hand. You're not normally at this service. As there was people looking around, like, which one? They delivered those for years to Salvation Army, some to Interfaith. You, you can bug your neighbors, too. If you've already given us all that you don't need, bring them in, and we'll get them up there. Finally, Christmas Eve, uh, we are going to have two worship services. I uh, talked to council about that this week to make sure they two was enough. Um, we all agreed we believed it was. Uh, we'll have 4 o'clock Christmas Eve, which will be worship without walls in the parking lot. 6 o'clock will be inside, okay? 6 o'clock inside, 4 outside. And if you're coming inside at 6, please bring a mask because we'll have more people than normal. So I'm going to ask everybody to do that Christmas Eve. Of course, we'll have the, our electric, for you visiting, we have, we have battery-powered candles for candlelight like these. So we'll be doing that. So we'll get that in the bulletin. for. I think it is actually in the bulletin today. So, All right, thank you for your patience this morning. I'm going to go collect a couple of bulletins, and I'll be back. But you get to listen to Twinkle Fingers here play as we take a quiet minute to bear our hearts and minds for worship. Begin worship together on page two of your worship bulletin. And we begin with the apostolic greeting. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We come together in confession. Blessed be the Lord our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we do not live as the Lord our God desires.
loving and forgiving Lord our God. We confess that we are captive to sin. In spite of our best efforts, at times we go astray. At times we do not welcome your strangers. At times we do not love our neighbor. At times we are not forgiving to one another. Restore us, O Lord our God. Turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the righteousness of Jesus. Amen. People of the Lord our God, hear and receive this great good news. By Jesus' endless grace and mercy, our sins are forgiven, and we are free, free from all that condemns us and free to live and serve Jesus. Be strengthened in Jesus' love, comforted by his peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit to serve him. Amen. We pray the prayer of the day there together. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, minds, and souls, Lord God our Father, to prepare the way of your only Son, Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Continue to strengthen us to serve Jesus in all of our actions, words, and deeds. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue praying the prayer for the world together. Let us pray. Let us pray for all victims of any forms of violence, terror, human trafficking, and all displaced peoples, all victims of ethnic, racial, gender, sexual, political, and religious discrimination and violence, all victims of natural disasters or human-made disasters, all victims of war or warlike activity, conflict, oppression, and strife in Africa, Asia, and the Middle East, including in Afghanistan, Syria, and Yemen. Gracious God, our Father of healing and wholeness, through the power of the Holy Spirit, bring relief in every way you see fit for those impacted by natural disasters, human-made disasters, conflicts, persecutions, and wars. Empower all people to reach out to those impacted through the healing power of Jesus Christ. God, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we admit our human frailties and recognize we live in a fallen creation. Restore us each in every way as you see fit, so that your will is done. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Before our anthem and scripture hymn there today, we're going to dedicate the gifts that are here as well as those uh, we brought in and all the purchasing that we understand Carol McCormick uh, is our Energizer Christmas bunny that goes out with all the team and helps purchase. They were joking with me, for those of you who know about the Thrivent cards that we can get, I'm a member of Thrivent, they're $250, and I had said to, to Louise or whoever, to Cindy, I think it was, hey, just I'll use it for the other ministries, and they were like, oh, no, 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 it's gone. We're using it all, so... <laughs> so. That insert is in your bulletin today. Again, we're dedicating all these. Uh, they will go to Lake Ware Middle School, Youth, our Girl Scout Troop in Need, Ocala Domestic Violence Center, Helping Hands Everywhere, Shepherd's Lighthouse, and several families in our congregation for their grandchildren. Brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, today we seek God our Father's blessing as we gather with thankfulness to bless His Son Jesus' Christmas gifts here as well as those at Beef O'Brady's, to the glory and praise of Jesus and his youth in need. All your works glorify and praise you, O Lord God, our mighty, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and your faithful servants glorify and praise you. Blessed are you, O God, our Father, King of all of your universe. You made your whole earth to glorify and praise you. All your creatures glorify and praise you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we lift our voices to join the sounds and songs of your heavens and earth, of things seen and unseen. You stretched out your heavens like a curtain. You divided your day from night. You appointed your times and seasons for work and rest, for tearing down and building up. You blessed your people through all generations and guided them in life and death. Abraham and Sarah, Moses and Miriam, Isaiah and all of your prophets. St. Mary, Mother of our Lord and Savior Jesus. St. Peter, St. James, St. John, and all of Jesus' apostles, 
and all of your saints and witnesses in your Son Jesus' holy Catholic Church of ages past, in whom the Holy Spirit spoke and moved. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, O God our Father, remain with us now and bless us as we dedicate your Son Jesus' Christmas gifts for his youth to his glory and praise. Bless all of your people who made Jesus' gifts possible. Bless all of Jesus' recipients of his gifts and bring them to the knowledge of Jesus' love for them. Continue to grant us faith to know and accept Jesus' gracious purpose in all things. Grant us joy in them and lead us to the building up of his kingdom. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord God Almighty, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. The blessing of the Lord God Almighty, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, through the power of the Holy Spirit, remain with us all, with all of Jesus' Christmas gifts, and with all of Jesus' families and youth, who will receive them now and forever. Amen. Our anthem and scripture hymn there is on page three of the worship piece of your bulletin today. We are going to sing the first three stanzas of Light One Candle to Watch for Messiah as we are in the third Sunday of Advent. find today's gospel on page two of your lessons and financial section of the insert today. We begin at the top of page two with the introduction uh, to the gospel. St. John's gospel describes Jesus as the holy light of his father's world. St. John the Baptist is presented as a witness to Jesus one who directs attention away from himself to Jesus, the one true holy light. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from the Lord God whose name was St. John the Baptist. St. John came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through the light. St. John himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by St. John when the Jews and priests and Levites from Jerusalem came to ask him, Who are you? St. John confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah the prophet? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet we expected to come? St. John answered, No. Then they said to St. John, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? St. John answered them, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now when they had been sent from the Pharisees, they asked St. John, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor the prophet Elijah 
nor the other prophet. St. John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan River where St. John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Grace Heavenly Father, thank you for gathering us here on this Sabbath. We're grateful to be here today, grateful to be healthy enough to be here. We're grateful to be worshiping with those who are joining us on Facebook, um, live streaming as well as tape, and several on YouTube and the parking lot ministry. We're so grateful for these opportunities, and we give thanks, Lord, on this Sabbath that the, the medication from Pfizer has not been approved in this country and will be distributed here and around the world. We know the other two companies are very close to the same thing. This has come in your time. May we be beacons of your holy light, that no virus has control over us ultimately. We work together with the power of the Holy Spirit through the wonderful gifts that you've given all these researchers to make these things happen. We're beacons of light to continue to be positive, to continue to share. Father God, that in your Son's death and resurrection, you continue to claim this world. We're grateful for it. We're grateful to worship and serve. And we're grateful to continue to express in our actions, words, and deeds, not only our love of Christ, but that he is the one true holy light that will never be darkened. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Carol! (laughs) Believe it or not, we had so many people here today, I actually ran out of bulletins. (laughs) But you know the liturgy pretty well. Please don't do that. (laughs) Please get some hand sanitizer because that's why we don't do that. Don't, that's, that, uh, it's a weird world, it's contact tracing. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) I know you all get mad at me about that. You should, what he has to put up with when he comes through the doors. If she gets sick, it needs to come from me on contact, not anybody else because then I can't trace it. I'm not yet mad, but that's why we don't do that stuff. Do you have some sanitizer? No, here. I am absolutely dead serious. Once you've touched that bulletin, you have touched everything where these two have been, and I don't know anywhere where they've been. Normally, I'd have you two come up front, but we don't want you to have to sit in more than one chair. We're really glad you're here today, worshiping. I have a couple questions for you today. What's this? It's a candle. The gospel talks a little bit about a light, right? This is one, see? Forget about the rubber band because in the stand up there it teaches one to tilt. This is the, this is the really high technology we have along with this piece of styrofoam. We're a high-tech church. But when I turn the bottom of it, if the battery's not dead, oh, that figures. I've got to go get some batteries. Hang on. I figure it's the one time the batteries would be dead. (laughs) Look at him laughing. Wait a minute, I've got spare batteries. This actually is going to work well, believe it or not. The batteries were dead. Well, they've only been in there since last year. (laughs) Let's see if we have any. There we go. Look at that. Watch. You turn the bottom of this. And and, and look, it even moves a little bit. So there, the light came on. You see the light? Yeah, you see it? See that light? And it moves a little bit. This is the one we light on Christmas for the birth of Jesus. Because you know Santa Claus is coming to town, right? Has a good song. Santa Claus is coming to town. But my favorite card, I'm going to kneel down. Someone gave me for Christmas one time. Hmm? A fast car? I have an old truck. But I will tell you this, don't speed on that road out there because they sit on it all the time. They really do sit out there. But this light, like I showed you, it goes out. As you saw them, the batteries were dead. 
What does our gospel say about the light? There is a light that has a name. His name's Jesus. Is that your Jesus bear? His light never goes out. And he knows who you are. He knows who your parents are. And your grandma with the fast car. He's telling her to slow down. That's right. <laughs> Jesus knows who you are. And he loves you. As much as your parents and your grandparents. And he wants to place this light in you. You have a lot of grandmas? You hang around this church, you'll have a lot more. I have a lot of grandmas in this church. (laughs) And I'm a little bit older than you. But this light is right in here. And we're going to talk about it to your parents a little bit. This is the light that can never be extinguished because it's from Jesus. And he loves you enough that he gives it personally to you. You'll understand that a little more when you get a little bit older. But when Santa comes, my favorite thing to do that night before I go to bed, both Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, I sing happy birthday to Jesus. Because Santa comes and goes. Jesus stays. That's why we give him the white light, even though ours goes out. And everybody to that says, thanks be to God. You don't have to get hand sanitizer because you behaved. (laughs) Trust me, uh, I know you all are tired of me. Don't do that, don't do that. We'll get there. Trust me, I'm as happy at Pfizer. This is now going to do that. Oh, I know, I forgot my little... I'm as happy Pfizer has come out with that as anybody. The good news for me is in the summer, that outdoor ministry, I, ugh, was it hot? Nice to have, during the Christmas season, Advent as well, some visitors and some young folks, isn't it? <laughs> That was the rubber bands, <laughs> shooting it off like a rocket. I'll get it at the end. I wish I'd seen that, actually. It must have been pretty funny. Uh, anyhow, great to have you here today. Great to have our visitors with us today. Again, we had more attendance today than we've had in a long, long time. Ran out of bulletins. So uh, apparently uh, the light of Christ is shining well in this place and has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with all of us together. But certainly Jesus, first and foremost... Um, Sometimes uh, we get caught up in the church calendar year. I'm not sure what your church background is back there, but we follow a calendar. uh, of This is called Advent. And Advent is a really neat season because it's it's unique. They're all unique, but Advent's the only one where candles jump out of their holder. (laughs) Where we not only have an Advent wreath, but each Sunday, the four Sundays in Advent has a name or two words of a name associated with it, a theme of theology, so to speak. It's the only season like that, and we tend to forget that. I know that's true because this is supposed to stay out all the way through Epiphany, which is January 6th, the coming of the Magi. In several years, I would come in on the first Sunday of Christmas, and the altar guild already had it put away. And I'm like, what happened to the Advent calendar or Advent wreath? Well, Advent's over. And I would say, well, no, this is the Christmas candle. And so it should still be up. This one's easy. If it goes away, I know where to put it back out. Stay. But what's interesting is it helps us flow through the season. And I don't know how many of you actually know what those words are that are associated with these five candles. The first Sunday in Advent, we always talk about Jesus' return. We heard that from St. Mark this year in chapter 13. And this is the keep awake candle. You do not know the, where it will jump out. You don't know the day or the time or the hour. Keep awake, but it also means Christ is here and Christ is returning. Keep awake. This, on the first Sunday that we have St. John talked about, which we also have today, this candle is prepare. For prepare the way of the Lord for all of us. Make his path straight. You heard that again today from St. John. But we began that message from St. John last Sunday. 
This candle that is rose, or I think this one looks pink, the different color is it's Joy Sunday. Joy. When I grew up in the church, for you little folks back there, young folks I should say, I used to be scared of St. John the Baptist. This is the way he was presented in the church. Do this or else repent. Listen to what St. John said. Get out here. They're going to dunk you in the Jordan River. Repent of your sins. For some reason, he was presented to me like that. I was almost scared of St. John. How can he be scared of a guy that is joy Sunday? We're hearing about him again. St. John is joyous because he is the one who has been called and sent to prepare the way of the Lord. And he's accepted that call. And he's the last of the great prophets. That is incredible good news. This next Sunday will be the first time we actually hear about Jesus preparing for his birth. It is a celebrate or anticipate candle. Of course, this is the Christ candle that's starting to fall over again. (laughs) Keep awake. Prepare the way. Or prepare. Joy. Anticipate. Celebrate. That is a great season, isn't it? And St. John prepares the way for Jesus, but neither Jesus nor him make this hard. This is easy to do. It's easy to keep awake in the Lord. It's easy to prepare His way. It's easy to be joyous all the time, as best as you're able in the Lord. And it's easy to celebrate and anticipate His birth at His return. We mentioned it last week. We honor the Sabbath. You're here. We had more people honor the Sabbath today than ever. We honor the Sabbath. We serve. We love God, and we love neighbor. This is not a hard formula. This is an easy formula to keep awake, prepare, be joyous, anticipate, and celebrate. Marvin is back, along with Marianne. They're ready for all that. Maver. Welcome back from your Maver. Maver. That's right, Marvin's still gone. Yeah. Thank you for getting me straight. The candle has me all... <laughs> In that incredible good news, we learned something new about St. John the Baptist today. His importance can't be overstated as we had him talked about by St. Mark last week. If you remember that gospel, St. Mark was chapter 1, 1 through 8 being the verses. We are told in the first verse, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, point blank, he says it. And then St. John is introduced to us and we hear this, which always gets me excited. When they ask St. John what he's doing, he says, I baptize you with water. But the one who comes after me, who is greater than me, baptizes you with the Holy Spirit. You realize what he has initiated? No wonder he's joyous. It's the true essence of the divine that he's saying that Christ the Messiah is coming to touch each and every one of us, whether you're the youngest or whether you're the oldest. Literally the essence of God. Christ gives us in the power of the Holy Spirit. This is beyond joyous. God cares about every person, billions around the world. And says, my son wants to bless you with us. The divine essence of God. That was a new teaching in the day of St. John the Baptist. You think he wasn't excited about presenting that to the world? In that incredible good news, you hear something else that John gets to do today. It has a lot to do with that candle that I was sharing with the young people. John came to testify to what? The light. The one true holy light that will never ever be extinguished it doesn't have batteries it has a name jesus the prologue to today's gospel was taken out on purpose as well as some verses in the middle and they talk about that light if you remember the first verses to saint john's gospel there is one that articulates this for us the light came into the world and the darkness could not overcome it That is incredible good news, and John's the first person to say that. There is a light called Jesus, the Messiah, and no evil and no darkness will ever overcome it. They've been waiting for that. No wonder he's joyous and excited. Keep awake, prepare, but it's here, and Christ is going to return, and that's also good news to be joyous about. Are you excited about that today? If you're not, I'll chastise you for something with hand contact. (laughs) Edith is looking at me going, oh... John's status as the greatest prophet is clear that we hear about him twice during the season of Advent. And those verses that are pulled out of there today are specifically talking about Jesus, the Word made flesh. 
and the word came into the world, and many in the world rejected him. We don't hear that. If you don't think John is the greatest and last prophet, what we do in the church says otherwise. He is, and he's the last. So ask yourself the questions about why the Pharisees and the scribes and the Levites were asking St. John questions today. They don't ask him any questions in St. Mark's gospel. If they did, he doesn't record it. Are you the Messiah? No, I am not. Are you Elijah, the prophet, come back? Which they had prophesied would happen. No, I am not. Are you the prophet? You should ask yourself, what prophet? Many of them thought the Father was going to send another prophet before the Messiah. They don't even realize that he has. And it's St. John the Baptist. Because they wanted either the Messiah, Elijah, or this new prophet to reestablish the Davidic kingdom of King David, to kick Rome out, to make Jerusalem the center of the world, and to proclaim with earthly power God's dominance. And Jesus came and said, that has never been our intent. I have come to die and to rise to bring you that holy light and that holy power. And St. John the Baptist knows it. I can't wait to meet him someday. But where do I see that in the world? I mean, this week, I see it all the time. As we worship and serve and love God and love neighbor, I see the holy light. I see the Holy Spirit. And oftentimes it comes in real concrete examples through everything you do and loving God and loving neighbor. That is proof perfect. But think about November and December in here, a couple of things that we've dedicated besides these gifts. We dedicated the Thanksgiving baskets by loving our neighbor for those who are in need in the community, particularly from Lake Weir Middle School and some other families. We dedicated the quilts last month. If you lived in poverty in a foreign land and you're cold, and someone gives you a homemade quilt to put around your shoulders, you're feeling the one true holy light through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's exciting. My heavens, these gifts. These families are having to decide between putting meals on their table or Christmas gifts. That is devastating. But they don't have to decide that. They know we can feed our kids as best as we're able. And the Santa Claus is coming through us to bring these gifts. I wish I could be there to see the smile, particularly on the bike. Kimberly, age 14, and that bike over there. Without the love of God and neighbor, they wouldn't be here. Aren't you glad they're here? And aren't you glad they're going to be under the Christmas tree? And know that the holy light of Christ and his touch goes with every gift over there. So that they know the people they don't know love God and love neighbor. In this incredible good news, I watch how other people receive us as Christ's Lutheran Church. Do they see us staying awake, preparing the way of the Lord? Do they see us being joyous or just mundane Christians, which I believe there are way too many of those around the world. Oh my God, it's a church, I got... Oh, it's so early to get up and go to church. I don't want to be bored for an hour. The pastor, especially that guy named Dave, he talks too long. (laughs) They don't celebrate. They don't anticipate. Not here. But I watch how people receive us. On Friday, on the celebration of life for Tony, we were having our copier replaced in the office. We had it about five years And they were going to come out and swap it out. And we had scheduled them to come at 10 o'clock. The celebration of Tony's life was at one. Plenty of time to get the big copier from in the office out of the way. The new one in and not have the doors uh, jammed up with equipment. But Google, the worst technology company in the world, who says they are the worst or the best, I disagree with them. If you're noticing, you're visiting, I'm not a huge Google fan. To this day, if you Google this church, they send you to our temporary worship location. If you Googled us, you wouldn't be here. You'd be at Orange Blossom Hills Community Center. So guess where the copier delivery man went? 
on a day we had a celebration of life, Orange Blossom Hills Community Center. And he wondered why no one was there and why our name wasn't out there on a banner. There's another church that worships there and uses that site now. Fortunately, he had the phone number. We've tried since day one to get Google, this massive technology company. Oh, they got all this stuff. They can't change an address. You want to frustrate yourself? You go try it for us. But fortunately, he had the phone number. Hmm? That God, did you, you have the Holy Spirit's power because that, that wasn't that way on Friday. Maybe he complained. I don't know. He got here and he remembered us. And he said, oh, I brought your other copy machine to that really small office temporary when you, you... And it was really hard to get it in there. And he goes, wow, you have such a nice space and such a beautiful church now. Congratulations. I had no idea you knew who we were. And he said, man, you've come a long way in a very short period of time. I said, yeah, we have through the power of the Holy Spirit. But I said, look at this. You should have seen his eyes. This young man. And he looked at all this. And I said, we're expanding all the ministries. And now we have the Lord's home to better do it. He was marveled. He left here because he knows we're awake. We prepare. He knows we live in the joy and celebration and he also knows that we worship and serve and love God and love neighbor. Do you think he's telling people? Do you think he's telling people? Oh, he is. He's that kind of guy. But it wasn't done Friday. <laughs> Hires Baxley came to help Lori Pryor. Dad had pre-planned everything and had them come to assist with the service. I know Roy and Ron, I've known them for years, Roy, for a lot of years. And Roy addressed me, he said, oh, Pastor Dave, I haven't seen you in so long. I, I didn't know you were still around. And I said, well, it's a lot like what Mark Twain said, the reports of my demise are greatly over-exaggerated. <laughs> he was laughing. Roy and Ron stayed for Tony's celebration of life. And afterwards, Roy, who's known me a long time, said this to me. You, as a church, do it right. We celebrated that man. I never knew his life. That is an incredible gift. That goes out into the community. And then he said this. I have the police escort to get us over to the columbarium at Hope Lutheran Church Lake Weir. Do you want to come with us or do you want to follow us? And I said, um, Roy, I'm not allowed to go over there do the conflict and he was dismayed I said Roy don't be that way every day is a day closer to reconciliation we're already partnering with them at Lake Weir Middle School and deepening our relationship through Rosemary with Love Inc it's coming it's coming and if it's not in my lifetime it doesn't matter because the one true holy light is hard at work through the Holy Spirit and fire if you don't believe that then I dare you to talk to me about why the hardest thing that I ever have to deal with in the church is conflict. When someone gets mad at me or the church, what they tend to do is to cut and leave and never speak to people again. And fortunately, it happens. It's not just in this church. It happens in every church. It's the only organization I've ever been part of, which is sad, where that actually takes place. For those of you who are newer around here or haven't been with us as a while, that's what happened when Gary and Michelle Barris left. Gary was a devoted employee, but his health would not let him do the job anymore. He was deeply hurt when we had to let him go and hire Bob as facilities manager, and so was Michelle. They left and never spoke to the congregation until Michelle called me. She knew I'd answer on your behalf. Can you come to the hospital? Gary's dying. I said, absolutely. And we had last brights and celebrated with his brother and Michelle and Gary there at the hospital. That doesn't happen without the one true holy light of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. To my knowledge, that's only happened in this church, and I've been here since 2002 twice. 
Michelle hugged me three times, and she couldn't stop telling me how much Gary loved all of you. Gary needed me to be there for all of you, to bring closure as he was dying and moving on to the next piece of life. I will always remember that in the life of this church, that the holy light and reconciliation came, at least that time. And now Michelle most likely is going to celebrate his life here. And she opened it up enough that people were allowed to call, and several of our parishioners went to their house to visit Gary while he was still living. That is awake, prepared, joyous in spite of conflict, anticipating resolution and celebration when it comes. Today, always be the last verse of today's gospel. It walks us back in time, but it's right now, here. Verse 28 says this. These things took place in Bethany, across the Jordan River, where John the Baptist was baptizing. Well, everything I've just told you, these things took place at Christ Lutheran Church this week, just this week, as we were prepared and awake and joyous in anticipating celebration. And that's why we sing about the address that Google, maybe that's what made them change it. <laughs> one, five, six, nine, nine, one, five, six, nine, nine, one, five, six, nine, nine, Southeast 80th Avenue. <laughs> Stay awake. Stay prepared. Remain joyous. Celebrate, anticipate. Love God, love neighbor, worship, and serve. That's a great, great message from the one true holy light, Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. You'll find the communion liturgy today on the back side of your worship folder on page 4. For our new family, you're welcome to commune with us if you would like. If the children want to commune, they are welcome. If you'd like to have them blessed, I can do that. Um, This table is open to us here, which means it's open to you. Uh, I will hand you the wafer by by hand and ask you to dip it in the wine for intinction. We also have grape juice. I can get gluten-free. Do either of you need gluten-free if you commune? Good, because I ran out of that today too, but I have more. No, I have more in there. Our temporary sacristy is in there the kitchen holy mighty and merciful lord heaven and earth are full of your glory and great love you sent to us jesus your son who reached out to heal the sick and suffering who preached good news to the poor and who on the cross opened his arms to all in the night in which he was betrayed our lord jesus took bread he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body it is given for you do this for the remembrance of me Again, after supper, our Lord Jesus took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out the Holy Spirit, that by this holy communion we may know the unity we share with all your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, through him with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. Thanks be to God.
Won't you all be glad when we go back to kneeling at the altar and there's pita bread again? And we're hoping to go back to the pouring chalice as well instead of intinction. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ continue to strengthen us and keep us in his grace and the power of the healing Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. At the back side of your bulletin on page 4, we pray the blessing together. Let us pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord, singing, Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. We process out into the Lord's world, share his holy light with the doxology. Continue to bring Christ to all people today and every day, keeping awake, preparing his way, being joyous, anticipating and celebrating, worshiping on the Sabbath as we're doing, as well as serving, loving God and loving neighbor. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, go in peace, share Jesus' gospel good news. We will with thanks to God. Amen. Merry Christmas. Thank you.